Well, hello my friends, this is Robin Norgren and welcome to Josie's Art School episode number 198. Oh, I'm so glad that you're here. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit today and um, create an art project that is inspired by one of my favorite books called Papa Get the Moon for Me. And what I love about it is, of course, the story, but also that there is such beautiful imagery in that painting. And so if you have not read that book before, I would encourage you to go and find it at your local library or maybe look it up on um, your um, Kindle. But um, for me, I always like going to the library and I just love walking around the children's section. So it's a good excuse for me to go. So if you're like me, um, yeah, enjoy your trip to the, to the library and you're welcome. All right, so let's get started. So what you will need, I have actually two pieces of paper. I'm actually working on a smaller size paper today. So this is nine by 12. It's a mixed media paper. You'll also need some sort of cardboard and not necessarily this large, but I just wanted to bring it in so I could cut it along with you so you can see me in real time doing it. Um, a pair of scissors, um, something to create a circle. So depending on whether you want a very large circle or a smaller standard size circle, so you could use the masking tape inside or around. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the moon and we're also trying to get the ladder. And I won't tell you anymore, so you'll go read the book. But those two things are very important in the book. All right, so uh, the reason why you need a second piece of paper, it doesn't necessarily need to be a heavy um, mixed media paper, but this is what you're going to create the moon out of. And I would say you almost would, I would prefer, and I didn't do it, so that's on me, but I like the idea of using like a piece of copy paper because it gives it more of that translucent look when you add it over here to this piece of paper. All right, so you'll also, so you'll need a piece of cardboard, you'll need something to create a circle with, you will need at least, uh, you'll need two pieces of paper, um, some scissors, some glue, Ooh, yes, I do have glue, <laughs> some glue and then or, or a glue stick and then I have like a sponge and I also have um, a cotton swab so you'll need those because this is going to create texture on the moon so anything that can create texture that's really what you need there and then of course whatever you're going to create with so you can use so the colors you'll need are black brown and blue right um, and white to do some color blending and so I am going to mostly be using um, acrylic paints and watercolor paint but again you can feel free to use crayons markers colored pencils um, all of it will make a, cr a beautiful effect okay all right so the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to work on the moon so that it can dry so we can add it, you know, before we finish up this project. This is about a 20 minute project, okay? All right, so first what I'm gonna do, and um, I should have mentioned you also need a pencil. So you're going to draw a circle that's going to represent your moon. So I want a bigger circle. Uh, I actually am gonna give myself the choice. So I'm gonna make a bigger circle and a smaller circle. And then once we get over here to this piece of paper, I might change my mind, okay? Now, um, what I'd like to do in these circles is this is going to represent the moon, okay? Um, and so what we're going to do is you can keep it white, obviously, or what you can do is you can make um, a gray, kind of a gray. So you use your black and white, mix it a little bit, and then what you're going to do, and I like to wet my sponge a little bit before I get started. You could also use a sponge brush. So if you need to go and gather these materials, just pause me and go get these materials and come back, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of mixing of the black and the white together. So I'm actually just using a little tray and I'm just blending back and forth between black and white. So my, I am not attempting to fill the whole space with color. What I'm trying to do is just get a bit of a blend and then just kind of stamp it. You see that already? What a gorgeous color that is creating. So that is going to be my moon. So as you can see, I'm not getting too heavy handed with it. I want that kind of phases of the moon look on there. Now, another way you can do it if you don't have a sponge handy, so I'll do the second way in the smaller circle, you can take your cotton swab and you can do the same thing. You can just 
toggle back and forth between the black and the white and then just kind of stamp it. Oh man, I think I'm going to have a hard time figuring out which one I want to use. But you could go back and forth, so you could add the white first and then come back and add a little bit of the black. Now, you could do the same thing with crayons, okay, and I'll show it to you. I have my Crayola crayons here. So what you could do is you could take your crayon and you could just add circles in like this. Or you could just do a little bit of blending over the top. And either of them will look fine. So let me take this down so you get a closer look. All right, so this is what it looks like with just the stamping with the sponge, which I really love that. But here, this doesn't, this is a nice effect too. So that's a combination of crayons and of the acrylic paint using cotton swabs. So I'm going to let this sit over here to dry and so that I don't lose it. <laughs> and then what you're going to do with the background, you have a couple of different choices. I want to make an image like a night sky. So I don't want it too dark. So that's why I didn't say just black. Um, so I'm adding blue as well. And so I am using the Apple Barrel 2 Blue, okay? And I think I'm gonna use a combination of this blue and then my black, which is a jet black, also Apple Barrel. And I'm going to start with this and I might also add a little bit of oil pastel to it as well. So I'm putting this on my, my palette. And then what I really want to do is I don't want it to be too overpowering. So I'm going to use my paintbrush, but I'm going to water down the acrylic paints. Okay. So here it is. And again, I'm not going to get too particular with it, but look at that already. So you're just taking it. You're just adding it to your paper. Now I will want to fill the paper with this color. So I think once I put that down, I'm going to then just kind of add in more. But again, I want it more of a watercolor look. So I want some of that white showing through. And then you can feel free to do this as well as far as how just experiment with what looks good for you to your eye, right? So I'm trying to get that dark sky, but I want a little bit of kind of a blue coming through. I'm leaving a little bit of the white in there, but you may envision just a black sky. And if that's what you want to do, I'm trying to catch those, <laughs> catch the water as it goes down, then feel free to just create a black sky, right? So now that I've got this on the page, I'm just going to kind of go in between. Another idea would be if you wanted to take your sponge, kind of like what you did with the moon, and then maybe instead of stamping it, maybe wipe it along there as well. So again, giving it more of a textured look and not just simply a black piece of paper. And this is definitely one, uh, one of those situations where as you're doing it, you might start to feel a little bit uncertain of your colors. I would just say keep going because in the state that it is in right now, you will need to let it dry in order to really see and appreciate the final outcome. So as you can see, I'm going a little bit more blue in some areas. I'm actually using the sponge as a blending tool. And then you can pick up your paper and put it in front of your face rather than having it just sitting on your table and see if you like where you're seeing the black showing up. Maybe you want to add some blue in there. If you feel like you got a little bit too heavy in some areas with the black, you can easily take your acrylic paint 
or even take a chalk pass or a uh, oil pastel. So I'll do that, for example. And I will take my brush. You actually can even use your Q-tip as well. And you just want to brush some of the white in, right? Just very gently. And making sure not to go too heavy handed one way or the other. going to come back in and clean it up a little more. It's a little difficult on the wall, but you get where I'm going with this. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more here because I feel like it didn't get as dark on this side as the others. All right, so here's my night sky. And so by this time, this should be dry enough to start to make your, your decisions. So if you did the same as I did, where you've made a smaller one and a larger one, now's the time to go ahead and cut those out. And you can decide whether you want your pencil line to show or not. And again, this might be a decision you make once you put it over onto your painting. Okay, so this is what my moon would look like if I used the smaller one. Oh my goodness, you guys, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to choose. I might have to do this drawing twice. Maybe kind of a phases of the moon kind of thing, you know? All right, so then here's my larger version. So let's talk about it. For those of you who have not read this, uh, this story before, so there's the larger moon. I really do like that too. Um, it can actually maybe be a bit more stylized. All right, put them both on there. <laughs> All right, so once you decide which one you want to put on there, the only thing you want to think about is the moon is actually going to have a ladder going up to the moon, right? As if they were going to get the moon, right? So once you decide which one of your moons that you're going to add, or maybe you do both of them and you and you come up with another idea. So feel free. You probably will have some extra piece of paper, uh, extra space on that piece of paper that you used to create another one. You can stop the video and come back. All right. So once you've made your decision on which moon you're going to use, you're then going to add the moon. Now here's another thing thought. If you want the, um, the, the ladder to go diagonal, then you would maybe place your moon this way or this way. If you want it to go just straight up to the moon, then you would probably put it right in the middle. I actually am going to make my moon or my ladder so that it goes diagonally. So look at that already. That is pretty amazing. <laughs> Don't you love your art? I do too, I love my art. All right, so now from here, what you're going to do is you're going to take your brown paint, and again, this is gonna be up to you to decide what shade of brown that you're using. I'm, I'm um, anticipating that I'm probably gonna put a little bit of white in my brown paint. So this one is Nutmeg Brown. It's an acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. And what you're going to do is you're gonna cut a piece of your cardboard and your cardboard is going to act as a paintbrush, okay? So you kind of want your brown paint, and actually you could do this with just a regular paintbrush. This is just to have a little bit more fun with it. What you're gonna do is you're going to take your paint, you're gonna let it drip down a little bit like this, and you're going to just dab the edge of your cardboard and then you're going to place it on your paper like this. Okay? And it's going to be in the formation of a ladder. So you do one side of the ladder and then the other side of your ladder. And maybe it's a little bit smaller. You have to fold it maybe and then you're going to do the steps 
of the ladder. I might have to come in again. Mine looks like it's got, <laughs> I got somebody actually stepping on it. All right. So as I said, this looks a little bit dark, but I'm all actually not mad at the darkness of that. I think actually that's going to play really well when everything dries. So as you can see, you have to be pretty careful with the placement of it, right? But this just has a more stylized view. Now I'm going to take it off so you can see it on the screen because because the the brown is so dark, you might not be able to see it as well. So let me come close with it. But I actually really love that. Now, if you, after uh, reading the story, if you don't already know, want to add a mom or a dad, excuse me, a dad and a child, or maybe your rendition of who would get the movie for whom, you could always use your scrap paper and draw the figure out and put it here. So let me let me give you an example. I could probably do one real quick. So let's say, you know, for many of you who already know this, I'm kind of into owls. So you could do something like drawing the owl. And then maybe draw a little kid owl. Yeah. And then you could cut them out. Here is owl number two, and then we could have them just sitting here. And maybe one of them climbing, right? Or you could just have them over in the corner talking. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. Make sure and check out my other videos. I have close to 200 videos right here on this channel. Um, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell to know when all my videos come out. I do two to three videos every single week. If you don't know how to spell the name of my school, it's Josie's Art School. And as you can see, owls are also <laughs> in my um, my avatar but I am so glad that you stopped by if you're interested in my art kits my sewing kits my art journal kits my original art everything is down in the comments or in the uh, description down below on this video or you can google Josie's art school or my name Robin Norgren thank you so much for stopping by enjoy tag me on Instagram so I can see